Well, hello my friends, it's Sean Petit and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Look at this calming, wonderful piece that I did. Here are the supplies that we'll be using. So I'm starting out on an 11 by 14 MDF board that has been gessoed and I'm using the metallic jelly prints that I created in last week's video showing you the Arteza products. Um, I will have a link to that. Um, in the description on the blog and on the end cards at the end of the video. So I am using today something a little bit different. I typically use Liquitex matte medium, but for this project I'm using gloss medium. And the reason being is because um, it gives that shine, it doesn't dull down that metallic mica powder wonderfulness of those um, jelly prints and uh, that's the whole reason I wanted to use them because they're so wonderful. So I'm using Liquitex gloss on the entire piece. So once I've got those papers down up on the top I am now using some DecoArt Media um, crackle paint and this is one of my favorite supplies. Um, I use it all the time and it works every single time. It crackles, it does its thing, and it's wonderful. So I'm just putting that down with my palette knife nice and thick. The thicker it is, the bigger the cracks. The thinner it is, the smaller the cracks. So here's another one of those jelly prints. Um, that I created and you can see that wonderful shiny metallic. It's just so yummy good um, So I'm putting that down again with my gloss medium and um, getting a nice coat All of the supplies, like I said, will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog will be down below in the YouTube description box. So one of my favorite, favorite things to do, and if you've not done this, you should do it, or try it at least, is to stencil onto tissue paper. And the reason that I love it is because if you're unsure in any way of putting any elements or different things like that onto this background that you absolutely love, this is the way to do it. So I'm using a bunch of different stencils. This is the background stencil. The swirl stencil was the first one. I'm using potting soil in archival ink and I'm also using black ar archival ink. And you want an ink that is permanent because when you put it down, you don't want it to run or blend or anything like that. This is the old type text stencil. The other one was vintage script st t stencil. And I'm not sure exactly all of what I'm going to be using, so I'm just stenciling out a whole bunch of stuff. And then I can kind of audition each individual element as to where I want it to go. Now, all of the stencils that I use today are going to be on sale. And again, that link is down below. So I'm using fluid acrylics because I want my color on this piece to be super light because I want to add some color but I don't want to take one ounce of away from that yummy grungy goodness that I have in those jelly prints. So I've got my fluid acrylics out and these are deco art fluid acrylics and I've added some, a tiny bit of water, not a whole bunch, um, but I've got it pretty wet and um, I'm just kind of dropping my color softly and inconsistently around my areas and really what I want it to do is just kind of pool and do its own thing and feel really organic like the jelly prints feel and so my theme for this piece is that goes along with the quote and I'm going to share more about that at the end of the video but I'm I'm envisioning a river and how a river might look or feel to me and um, one thing I love about creating is that it's all subjective and it's really for you to create how you feel and what you see and what you need. And so this is my version of a river. So I'm just continuing to drop that color in, picking up lighter colors and dropping it into some of that wet paint, letting it kind of 
fan out and do its thing. But just tiny, tiny little bits, not a lot of paint needed and not a lot of paint um, on my brush. Um, I just add a little bit more water maybe to my brush and then drop it back down. I did add um, a cobalt blue because I needed that pop of a different color blue. So I've got teal, Payne's gray, Prussian blue, and now this cobalt blue, and I've added some Titan buff in there to just kind of give it a little bit of variation. So I'm using basically the same colors. I've just lightened them up with some Titan buff, um, and then I'll darken it as I go down because again, this is the top was the sky, and this is my river. And the very bottom where that dark metallic is, that's the bottom of the river. And you'll see I kind of get some swirls and some curvy lines in there to represent maybe the ripples in the water in the river. Um, but the because I'm using the paint so um, fluid, it just sinks right into all of those cracks, those wonderful cracks of the crackle paint. Oh, it's so, so good. So I'm starting light and I'm just going to continue to add darker colors as I go. Then I'll come back in with some Titan Buff and kind of add some highlights um, within that blue area to give it some variety and some interest. You can see my waves are starting to um, develop and I wanted them to be super subtle so I'll kind of tone them down a little bit here and there but just keeping it really loose and my paint really um, loose and juicy, letting it soak into all, and you can see right there is where I add some of that Titan buff into that already wet, and it just kind of floats out so good. So adding just a tiny bit more lighter Titan buff in there just to add some variety. Maybe thinking about some of the white cap on the, on the ripples of the water and that kind of thing. And then I'll start adding some darker colors. And, um, and these are all the same colors that I used in the top, just with a variation of some Titan buff in it or mixing the teal and the Prussian blue together. And um, just real soft and light strokes. So now I'm going to add some mica powder to it because I think that it just adds so much goodness. This, this shimmery flakes. And when I think about the reflection from the water and how it kind of looks magical and maybe sparkly sometimes, um, that's what I'm thinking about here as I add my mica powder. And I've just dipped my paintbrush into that gloss medium again. And in the video that I did last week showing you how I use the Arteza, I go into real detail about how I use this and, and then create with it. So I hope if you haven't seen that, you can check it out because I go into more detail on how I use the mica powder. This bottle is also full of mica powder, and I show you the mixture again in that video as well. But it's mica powder and um, airbrush medium. And it's perfect for these drips because um, they just kind of pool and then all of that sparkle just shows up. And I wanted these drips kind of in the background underneath the layers. So now I'm going to start adding all of my tissue paper elements. And I, I did those swirls because I wanted it to be representative of maybe what I would see in the rolling of the water. And um, again, everything that we create needs to be created from a place of what we want and what we want to see. And it doesn't have to make anybody else happy, and that's the great thing. And so that's um, why I put those down, because that's kind of what I was seeing. And so, and the, using the gloss, I'm still using the gloss medium. Typically I use matte medium, but the gloss medium works the same. You want to make it, make sure that you've got a lot of medium down, that it's thick and juicy when you put your tissue paper down into it because then it just virtually disappears. You'll see that it just, you can barely see it now. But it's that wonderfulness of being able to really have a lot of control of where you're putting these sudden, subtle hidden elements. And then if you put something down and you don't like it, 
you just take it up and nothing, you know, your background's in still in perfect condition. I just, this is just one of my favorite things to do because it looks as though those layers were first, that they're peeking through and you can tear that tissue paper in just the tiniest little bits. You have so much control. So here's my airbrush medium, and now we're about to get to the star of the show. Ah, this is just the, the gold. It doesn't show up quite as wonderfully on camera. It is just magnificent, the mixture. So I've got my, um, this is Aztec gold in my airbrush medium. I've mixed that together. It's nice, and that airbrush medium is like water. However, it's not diluting the color. And so um, it is wonderful for drips, for writing. Like I could make up a bunch of this gold and put it in a bottle like I did with that blue. Oh, it's so good. And I'm going to just continue to layer this across that edge, across the middle part of that, of the piece and really kind of get in there and let it drip go over it several times so that I can get some really good juicy drips going on because this is the, the star. This is um, the, that magical element that really draws you in and becomes your focal point or ties you to your focal point. And again, it's getting in all of those cracks of the um, crackle paint. And now I'm just gonna come back in and make sure that that top line is really full and dark and has all that gold because that's the that's where your our eye starts and focuses in on. Now I'm just gonna take some of that leftover and just pat it down in certain areas at the top. One, to um, keep the eye moving around the piece and to tie it all together. So I printed out my quote and my inspiration for this piece on tissue paper and again I'm putting that down with my gloss medium. And now because it needs some contrast and typically what I would do is I would shade with my charcoal pencil. But because I've used a gloss medium, there's no bind, there's no mat to it, there's no grit, there's no bind to it, and I wouldn't be able to get my charcoal pencil to do anything. It wouldn't, it wouldn't grab hold. So I'm doing my little bits of shading and adding that contrast that it desperately needs to really add interest and complete the piece. I've taken the brown metallic and the space gray metallic. Um, and just added some of my shading with that to really add that contrast that it needs to finish up the piece. I'll do that and then I'll go around the edges with my paint and add my shading around the edges with my paint instead of my charcoal. 
And that's it, my friends. Super easy, great way to use up uh, the jelly uh, prints. Um, and you could use this what, with whatever jelly prints you have this way. Um, and again, all the supplies will be listed on the blog. If you enjoyed today's project, and I hope that you did, please subscribe and like and share and all those wonderful things. And don't hesitate to um, ask any questions. I'll do my best to get back to you. And then stick around for the conversation at the end because it's a good one about the meaning of this piece and the quote um, from Rumi that is just so wonderful and meaningful. All right, my friends, thank you so much, and I will see you next Sunday. Well, hello, my loves, and happy Sunday to you. Look at this gorgeous mess. Oh, my gosh. I, I just love it. I love how it turned out. I love that the idea that I had or the expression that I wanted for me came through. Um, and that's really what it's all about as, as artists, as creators, is that we create what is inside of us that, that inspires us. Um, okay, so um, I went over everything throughout the video. The things that will be on, so I used all the stencils on my tissue paper, and you guys, I cannot say enough. If you have not tried using, you know, your archival, any of your archival inks, it has to be waterproof, um, on tissue paper and applying it, it um, it's just so much fun and it's, there's no risk involved. So if you don't like something, um, you can just take it right off. So all of, and, they, and it blends right in, and the key to having that blend in is using your fluid um, matte medium um, get lots of it on there and it just blends right in. I mean all my little simple numbers here and letters and different things like that just blend right into the background along, along with my my words. And so um, I used all my stencils this week. I think there's five of them. <clears throat> background words, old type text, uh, Paris, no um, vintage script, vintage postage, and swirls. And the reason I did the swirls was, um, they don't show up very much, but I, w I was trying to get this kind of wave feeling in there, and I wanted that kind of circular motion in there without it really being there. And sometimes that's what we need to do as we create, as have it, have the symbols for us with, it doesn't have to make sense to anybody else, um, and so that's why I had those swirls in there. And then they kind of look a little bit like um, plants that you might see in the water. Okay, so those stencils, all those stencils and everything will be listed down below in the YouTube description box or the link to the blog will be down below. Those will all be on sale this week. And then of course I used my fabulous, fabulous papers from last week's Friday video or something like I don't know what day it is still um, where I demoed the Arteza um, med metallic paints and mica powders and I used some mica powders today um, I used the gold and I made up my mixture and I go over that in the in the video um, but I also used the mica powders up here they're so gorgeous and it just gives us and it's hard to see it on camera but it just gives it this amazing shimmer and that gold I mean that's mica powder and I put it I put so I can get the drips I put it with my airbrush medium so that um, it doesn't dilute the color but um, I just love it so I was going for this water effect and this could be ocean if you wanted but I wanted it to be more river and like this is the bottom of the river and the reason being is because my quote um, I found my quote this week um, I'm gonna leave a link to this book it's called the joy of now journal and um, I 
I think we're all feeling just weird. I, I can't really put a finger on it, and I don't want to over-dramatize or sensationalize anything, but I was talking to my husband this week about how I just feel off. I just, things aren't normal. Everything feels like it's a lot of work. Um, being fearful of going out. Am I doing the right things? Am I safe? Am I, you know, all those things. Um, and so it takes practice to find my joy. And I, I just want to really reiterate that to you today, that if you are struggling, and even when, even when it's in normal situations, um, I practice finding joy. I practice every day getting into something, whatever it may be, and it varies from day to day to week to week. But this is the Joy of Now journal, and it says mindfulness in five minutes a day. And it's just quick, um, quick uh, quotes, and then um, it says carve out at least 10 minutes today to do something for which your soul yearns. And, um, and the quote is, and I put it down here, when you do things from your soul, you feel a river moving in you, a joy. And it is so, so true. I mean, we all have things that we have to do. That's just the, that's called being an adult. Um, but then there are, then there are, is that time where we can carve out something that that really moves us, that excites us, that gives us um, passion and um, creativity and all those things. Whatever that is for you, whatever that thing is from your soul, it's it inspires you, it moves you, it gives you new ideas, and it gives you joy. It does for me anyway. It gives me so much when I can do the things that really inspire me. And it changes my perspective, my attitude, everything. And I have been working hard on that. I have a lot of things that I have to do for the business. That's just the deal. Um, and, you know, we've got a staff and all those things that have to be done. There's just stuff that has to be done. And then I have to really practice. And I always use the word practice because it doesn't come easily. It doesn't come natural sometimes. And when we're in crazy times or things are different or changing or whatever, um, it can be very, very difficult. And I practice this time of quiet space um, every single day to um, nourish my soul, to find that joy, to find that passion, that energy, that all of that, um, it just keeps me going. And so I just encourage you, whether it be this book or anything, anything, I, you know, I use my Bible, I use um, all different kinds of poetry books, and um, there's just a million things out there that can inspire you to kind of get quiet and find out what your soul needs and then do it. It could be it could be creating and painting, it could be taking a walk, it could be gardening, whatever that is that kind of centers you a little bit and um, really inspires you, um, that is going to give you joy. And so this is my river. This is my river running through me. And um, what I love about art is that it can look and be whatever it is for you. But this is my river. And um, it did definitely create some amazing joy for me. It just felt so, so good. I just positively love it. All right, loves. Um, I have a link. I'll have a link to the video of the papers that I created and the mica powders and all that that I um, demonstrated. Um, I have that link down below as well and in a card in the video above or something like that. <laughs> um, all right, my loves, I hope you are um, doing well and surviving all of the transition and changes as we move forward um, in our day-to-day -day lives. And um, I just I hope that you take the time today to really um, do that thing for your soul, from your soul, so that you can find some joy. All right, my loves, have a wonderful Sunday, and always, always know that you are loved.